Are you a cautious person? If you are, you're probably a high C. Today's video is all about you. Or if you know someone who may be a little more cautious and slow to speak, we're going to talk about them today. We're going to give you words to describe our high C types today. We're going to talk about the things that high C's love and enjoy. And we're going to talk about how C's are motivated and why this information is important. Let's get started. So our high C quick refresher, remember that 10,000 foot view. High C's are reserved and task oriented. They're very analytical, love organization. They're all about processes and making sure that they've got a big picture view of everything in their lives. They like to be organized. They like to take care of business from a starts with one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then rinse and repeat. And they go through those kinds of things. Think about scientists, accountants, surgeons, those kind of people, pilots very high C driven. Typically high C's we think about as our higher intellectual styles. So the most intellectual of all the styles. That's not to say the other ones aren't, but C's typically are that way. So C's are our cautious style. C-A-U-T-I-O-U-S, cautious. Measure twice, cut once, and don't let any of the other styles touch the saw because they're going to mess it up. So C's have a hard time deferring things to other people because they know if they do it, they're going to do it right. So from that perspective, they're going to saw, 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 saw. Can I help? Nope, I got it. They got it under control. C's are conscientious. Oh, there's a big word. C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-T-I-O-U-S, conscientious, meaning that they're all about staying on time and being on time. So if a high C tells you they'll be somewhere at 8 o'clock, that means they'll be there at 7.30, ready to get started at 7.45, so they don't miss anything that's going on. And if a high D or an I tells you they'll be somewhere at 8 o'clock, you know what that means, right? 8.30, it could be tomorrow, it could be next week because they got it wrong on their calendar. You know, Ds are all about themselves, so they'll show up when they're, they're ready and they've, they've, it's on their calendar, on their planner. And then Is are just, woo, they're kind of lost sometimes, so we get a little bit, tend to get a little bit out of sync in terms of what we put on the calendar, what we don't. And S's are smart enough to know that, hey, the high C's gonna show up on time, let me catch a ride with them. <laughs> S's are no dummies for sure. C's are competent, C-O-M-P-E-T-E-N-T, -E -E competent. You might have picked up that I'm spelling these out for the C's. I got y'all. I got you. Okay, Because some of these words are a little bit tougher to spell. But competent, meaning that if you ask a C to do something, guess what? They're going to do it. And they're going to do it the way exactly that you asked them to do it. So you tell them, here are my five things that I want you to get done. Step one, step two, step three, step four. They're going to do everything in step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. They're not going to change anything. They're not going to try to diverge and think. They're not going to try to think outside the box. Hmm, maybe we should do it this way. Nope. They're going to do it exactly the way that you said it, as you said it, when you said it. And so that's, there's a lot of comfort in that for a high C in terms of they know what's going on. And so it should be a lot of comfort for you in, in assigning that high C a task because you know it's going to get done and get done the way you want it done. C's are contemplative, contemplative, C-O-N-T-E-M-P-L-A-T-I-V-E, -E, contemplative, meaning they're inner thinkers, inner problem solvers. My wife is a super high C. She's 100 on 100 scale. So as we were getting ready to prepare for the birth of our first child, we had you know, all those things lined up because you know, C's are super organized. So we took all the birthing classes. We took the breathing classes. We had the bag packed six months ahead of time. I mean, bottles were color coded. All the bibs are alphabetized or color coded. I mean, it was just it was crazy how, my, how, how organized my wife was. So the day of the delivery came, rushed to the hospital. Everything's set up, ready to go. And so we're in there and everything's going well. And again, from a pregnancy standpoint, when you're talking about labor, and especially for you guys who are out there watching, there are three stages of labor. One to four centimeters of dilation, which is bad. And then you get four to seven, which is really bad in terms of pain. And seven to 10, which is just bleep. It's, I can't say it on video, but it's bad. It's really bad. So I mean, it's just horribly bad. Like imagine having a kidney stone and getting kicked in the face at the same time. That's the kind of pain that these, these ladies are enduring during pregnancy, during that labor. So we're at one to four. And we're okay and, and, and life's okay. But when we get to like four and a half, my wife really needs to, for me to kind of step in and, and start helping. So, so I'm, I'm over here and I'm like, okay, sweetheart, let's breathe, shall we? In, two, three, four, out, two, three, four. You're doing such a good job. I'm so proud of you. Which is again, I'm a high S. So if you've seen it in my other videos, you know I'm a high S. I'm all about that. So I'm supportive. I'm, I'm there. Everything's good. And again, my wife had a plan 
and everything was supposed to happen this way, and at this way we do this, and at this point we do this, and this point we do this. In fact, we even hired a doula, and if you don't know what a doula is, a doula is a person who's an advocate that you meet with during pregnancy, but before you actually get in the room when you're having the child, so that she can be an advocate for you in terms of giving the doctors and the nurses your wife's wishes when she is not able to physically because she's in so much pain or enduring the pregnancy part during that super hard labor. So we had the doula in the room and life is good and, and everything's great, but then we get to like six centimeters. And so we're getting really, really bad in terms of the pain. So I look over to my wife, I say, sweetheart, you're doing so well. Let's breathe, shall we? And I put my hand on her back and I go, in, two, three, four. And she turns to me, she goes, I'm not breathing with you anymore. I'm like, okay, all right. So the good Southern nurse says, darling, come with me. And she hands me a cup of ice chips and a spoon and, and she walks me away and she walks, she goes, you're doing such a good job. You're such a good husband. And I'm like getting further and further from my wife. I'm like, what's going on? And so she backs me to the corner of the room and I'm sitting over there 20 feet away and my wife's over here just screaming and in pain. That's not good for a high S, but I digress. We get to seven, oh, seven centimeters. It was totally brutal. And I can remember the look on my wife's face. She turned pale white when that major contraction hit. And this is exactly her facial expression in that moment and what she did. And again, I'm not trying to be funny. Laugh at home if you want to, but I'm not trying to be funny. This is exactly what my wife did when that seven centimeter contraction really hit hard. She goes, and she's visibly shaking. She's white as a sheet. She's in a tremendous amount of pain, but she has her hand up. When a high C gets under stress, they don't go outside for help. They look inward. When a C gets under stress, they don't go outside for help. They look to themselves. So my wife didn't want a doula. She didn't want a nurse. She didn't want me. In that moment, she was going to handle that situation on her own. That's very difficult for other styles to be able to understand in that we want to be helpful. S's want to be helpful. I's want to try to entertain or maybe take the edge off and, and make it a, a less gruesome and, and, and hard experience. But that's not the way that C's work. How do you deal with that? If you see a C under stress in your life, you just put your hand on your shoulder and say, I'm here for you, and now I'm walking away. And you walk away, and you walk away, and you walk far, <laughs> far away as far as you can because if you want to maintain your body parts and your sanity, that's what you do because a C will take care of it. They'll handle that situation every single time. Oh, did I mention, by the way, that my wife delivered my, my firstborn daughter naturally? This was all naturally. No drugs, no epidural, no nothing. That was the way it was for all five of our kids. One of them, we tried to get an epidural, and the anesthesiologist missed when he was putting it in. And so by that, by that time, uh, here comes that, that uh, child was coming. So that's not a badge of honor for my wife. She doesn't see this that way. But again, that's just another indication that C's don't need crutches. They don't want crutches. They don't want drugs. They don't want other things interfering with something. They can handle it. They can, tear it. They can take care of it. Now, personally, I think my wife's a little crazy. But that's how she wants to handle that situation. And in that moment, we have to let them do that. No matter how much pain it causes us, we need to let them get through those hurdles themselves. C's are calculating. Calculating. C-A-L-C-U-L-A-T-I-N-G. Calculating. Now, I'm not talking about the devious kind of calculating, let's say, like from Schmeagel of Lord of the Rings, who would be like, Oh, my precious, or is this phone is the nicest phone ever, or it's man's, it's all man's. No, not that kind of, that was pretty good, that wasn't, that wasn't bad. No, no calculate in terms of numbers, like four plus four is eight, give me algebra, give me calculus, give me science, physics, those kinds of things. Don't give high C's all of this interpretive stuff like English where we have to determine what's the symbolism of this author in this particular story. Who cares why the shirt was red? They just like red. Maybe red was their favorite color. They don't like abstracts. They like absolutes. So they're based in logic. They're based in fundamentals. So that's why C's are really driven by math and science typically in terms of their career choices. And C's are consistent. Consistent in the high level of work that they do. Consistent in the clothes that they wear. They're consistent in the foods that they order. Now, my wife and I have five kids, so we spend a lot of time in the minivan going to activities like band or soccer or whatever like that. So we do order a lot of fast food. I know, don't, don't shame me, but it is what it is. So let's say our kids are, are dropped off and they're all at band for the day. We're going to go to Taco Bell and pick up some food. So my wife is driving and I'm in the passenger seat here. And so we get to Taco Bell. That's a bad restaurant, I know, in terms of you know, your choices for nutritional value are limited, but that's where we are. I know exactly what my wife is going to get every single time we go to Taco Bell. She's going to order two chicken soft tacos, an order of nachos, and a medium Pepsi. Every 
freaking time. Every time. It's just so frustrating for me. But for her, she likes that consistency. So we pull up. She's driving. I'm in the passenger seat. We get this, well, can I talk about Can I take your order? And she says, yes, ma'am. Can I have two chicken soft tacos and order nachos and a medium Pepsi, please? Will that be all? She says, no. And I do my typical high eye thing, which is, um, what comes on that uh, crispy chalupa nacho taco thing? No, I don't want that. Um, you got any specials today? And by this time, my wife is shooting laser beams out of her eyes going, Taco Bell, Oh, fine, fine, fine. Okay, um, just, uh, just give me a hard shell taco. Is that chicken or beef? And then we're out of there. I'm not eating dinner that night, apparently. I get dropped off on the side of the road. She's going to Subway. Who knows what's going to happen? But she doesn't understand why I want to look at the menu every time. Well, as an I, I like to be improvisational. I like to be creative. I like things to change. Not C's. C's love consistency in terms of waking up and going to bed. Consistencies of the things that they're doing in their job. Consistent in terms of what they do on the weekends. Consistent in the food they order. The I's and D's really struggle with that, but C's love that sameness. Kind of like what we said with the S's. They like that continuity and that consistency overall. Now C's, I love you. But your watch were something you have to be mindful of when you are mad, and my wife gets mad at me, when your anxiety level gets high or when you get a little sleep deprived, sometimes y'all can be a little cold. That's right, you can be a little cold. It, it, you become very unemotional. It's all about the, the job at hand, the getting things done. You become really black and white. There is no gray when you get cold like that. And so you're just really focused and you're really mad. And so see, take that really short with your sentences and really making sure that things are followed by procedure. You really cling to those procedures and protocols when you get under stress. So what you have to do to adapt your behavior is when you, uh, when you realize that's going on, breathe and lighten up a little bit, okay? Let the black turn into a little bit of gray. The blinds can blur a little bit because remember, people are involved in all these processes that you're so caring about. People have to execute them. And if you don't treat people in a way that they're going to be feel like that they're appreciated and supported and loved, then you're not going to get buy-in from them. So breathe and learn to smile a little bit more under pressure. And that will help you in terms of your communication skills. And that'll take them to the next level. C likes. What do C's like? Well, first of all, C's like to be right. In fact, if we really want to change that, we could scratch out the word mentally like and put H-A-V-E in there for have to be right. C's have to be right. They can't stand being wrong. So when we're talking about being right and wrong, sometimes we have to apologize. Let me show you how the different styles apologize if I could. Here's how a D apologizes. Sorry! Wait a minute, who, who's mad at who? I, I'm, I'm confused there. So I need like a card or something because that, that high D was kind of in my face. Here's how an I apologizes. Oh man, I'm, I'm sorry, we cool, high five, woo! All right, just getting back to friends as fast as we possibly can. We're playing golf this afternoon. I'm gonna smile and just wave. Then an S, an S is more subtle, so S is more like, oh man, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Alicia, I was, I, was, I was pulling in, I know we were doing some filming today, and, and I, I, I backed into your car, I know you just got the tires changed, brand new brakes on the car and everything, here's my business card, here's my social security card, here's my firstborn's birth certificate, whatever I can do to make this right, I'm going to have your car fixed by the end of the week, I promise, I'm so sorry. And they mean it, they're so sincere about it. And then here's how a C apologizes. They don't, ever. They're never wrong. A C is cautious, remember. They're not going to speak unless they know they're going to be right. Don't make bets with C's because you will lose every single time. So C's are not going to apologize very often because they have to be right. That's just who they are. C's like to know what's expected of them. They certainly love that. So when you go into a classroom as a high C, the first thing you're looking for is where's the schedule for what we're doing today? What's the homework assignment going to be? What topics are we covering? They want to know what the expectation is because, again, that gives them comfort. If there's nothing on the board, they're like, oh, my gosh, what are we doing today? Are we having a lab? I didn't prepare anything. Oh, my gosh, uh, do we need a textbook? Are we going outside? Ah, that makes them stressed out. So there's a lot of comfort in that. C's like an established pattern. Do this, do this, do this, do this, and repeat. Step one, step two, step three, step four, and over and over and over. So they love those patterns, and they love having that step by step. So what D's and I's might find just terribly monotonous, C's embrace because that pattern is logical. It makes sense to them. 
And so when I'm hiring a lot of seasonal organization, which I do for my medical billing company, I have to have folks who are task oriented, folks who are gonna be on point, self-motivated, because a lot of our folks work from home. So in that particular case, they love that monotony of coming in and knowing that it's the same thing over and over again. And I said monotony because as an eye, I just can't see how they love that and embrace that. And so what happens when I try to promote some of these people? Let's say if I say, hey, Sally, you know, you would make a great manager. You've been with us for three years. If she's a high C, she's going to be like, ah, but, but wait a minute, that, that's a pay raise. And, and you know, you're going to be able to, to teach people. Ah! They put up a lot of resistance. Why? Because people at a variable in that equation. Right now, they're coming in and they're doing their thing every day. They're building their widgets, if you will, okay? Whether that's building a claim or processing a payment or doing follow-up or whatever it happens to be. But if I ask them to go help others do that, now they're people involved. Remember, C's are task-oriented. They're not people-oriented. So they don't like that interaction as much as the people-oriented folks do on a daily basis. They would rather put their headphones on, sit in their cubicle, and they listen to Yanni or they listen to head-banging music, whatever it is, but doing their thing over and over. There's comfort that. Again, D's and I's, we would freak out. I mean, we would leave that company in three days if we had to do that every single day. C's love it. C's love clear instructions. They're gonna follow what you say, when you say, and how you say it. So as a leader, if you are leading other C's, you got to know that they're gonna start with one, then two, then three, then four, exactly how you said it. So if they mess up a process, that's on you. So if you have a high C child and you tell them to clean their room, you didn't really give them step-by-step -step instructions. Just like when I was in the classroom and, and folks came in and, and they said, okay, take notes on this chapter. Well, how can I expect my high C's to, to do anything other than panic if I haven't taught them how to take notes yet? I can't ask them to do something that I haven't taught them how to do or that expectation is very, very wrong. So C's want to know what's expected of them and they're gonna to have to have those clear instructions. Start with this, then do this, then do this, then do this. And they'll execute for you every single time. C's love finishing what they start. These are the folks who make these long to-do lists every day, whether that be the laundry and the garbage taken out and getting this done and this proposal sent out. They're gonna check those boxes and they're not gonna to go to sleep until all 32 of those tasks have been completed for the day. I don't care if it's two o'clock in the morning or 5 a.m., they can't sleep because they have to start every day with that clean slate. That's how they're wired. Because again, they are checking boxes to do, 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 to do. But it has to have a logical progression and a logical order to it. But once that logic is in place, they can knock it out. <sighs> they can breathe easy and then they can go to sleep. And C's love organizing things. Man, do they love organizing things. These are the folks who go to Ikea, like my wife and I did a few years back. And we spent nine hours there. It was the craziest thing. We had our five kids with us. It was, ah, it was just crazy but we had to get these boxes that were all over our house off the floor for my wife to lose that anxiety that she had been carrying around for so long. So we built all those shelves in three weekends, got all the stuff put in the bins, closed the door so you couldn't see it anymore, and then she could breathe, finally. So don't underestimate the fact that you know, your high C's are gonna to wanna to have things alphabetized and color coded and all of those things that give them order to life. They are the style of order. Whereas I's are the style of improvisation and flexibility, C's are all about order and rigidity. They love to have things in their proper place all the time. A tidy house for a C is a mandatory. I mean, for a high I, man, you can have clothes on the floor, in the sink, in the trash can, and they're perfectly fine. Because again, they don't have that need, inner need and passion to get that done. C's, organization all day long, twice on Sunday. Are you married to a high C like I am? Okay. If you are, then you probably don't really understand them very well. But if you're a high C, you kind of know these things about you a little bit. What is it going to take? Well, for a few dollars to really transform the way you communicate, really reduce conflict in any relationship. Again, it could be with a spouse, a significant other, parents at work, have an assessment. If you take an assessment, it will show you who you are and that self-awareness as we've already talked about is the key and the first step to being able to communicate better with others on a long-term basis. So to purchase an assessment, make sure you click on the link below and that will take you right to the store page.